Today we're taking a look at one of the most popular airbrushes available today. This is the Master Airbrush G233. According to Amazon, this airbrush right now has over 6,000 reviews, with the majority of those being positive. And for 40 US dollars, you not only get the airbrush, but you also get three different nozzles and needles. This includes a 0.2 millimeter, a 0.3, which comes equipped in the airbrush, and a 0.5 for spraying thicker paint. For the entirety of this review, I'm going to be using the 0.2 millimeter nozzle along with with the 0.2 millimeter needle. This will make the Master G233 much more of a detail airbrush, which is what I'm most interested in when painting. But of course, if you're doing general painting, I would just say stick with the 0.3, which comes equipped in the airbrush when you buy it. And if you really want to spray some thicker paints like base coats, you could swap over to the 0.5, which is going to help you out. So this airbrush is definitely an entry level option for those of you who are looking to get into airbrush painting. Everyone's going to have their own opinions on different airbrushes, expensive ones, cheaper ones like this. But my opinion is that inexpensive airbrush like this Master offers a ton of value for the money. So let's talk about a few of the pros and cons. In the hand, this airbrush feels okay. It's definitely on the cheaper side. It's nothing like what you'd see from an Iwata airbrush or a Harder and Steenbeck, but it does the job and it feels comfortable. A few months ago, I reviewed another inexpensive airbrush called the Point Zero, and this one feels very similar to that. As stated earlier, the airbrush that I'm reviewing today is equipped with a 0.2 millimeter needle and nozzle. And this model is equipped with a larger gravity fed cup at about one third of an ounce. On the rear handle, you'll find two features. One is a cutaway to flush the airbrush and the other is a screw on the back which limits how far you can pull back on the trigger. If you're unfamiliar with these features, the cutaway is used to quickly flush out any clogs you may have. So you press on the trigger for air, then you pull back on this a few times and that'll quickly blast out any clogs within the nozzle. And if you adjust the screw on the back, it's gonna limit how far you can pull back on the trigger, which is gonna limit the amount of paint that the airbrush sprays. When you pull back farther on the trigger, the airbrush is gonna spray more paint. So if you tighten this down, it's gonna limit that and it's gonna spray less paint. These aren't really that useful. It may be helpful for new painters, but I never use them. It's always nice to see extra features on an airbrush, so I'm glad that this master airbrush included these. So like always, let's break down this airbrush so that we can see all the internal parts. After removing the rear handle, I could loosen up this chuck to remove the needle. From here, I could start to unscrew the spring assembly. Now this screw right here is going to adjust the tension of your trigger. I always recommend keeping this screw down pretty tight because it's going to give you better control and create a better seal with the needle and the nozzle head. But if you fully unscrew this, you're able to remove the entire spring assembly guide. This one consists of three parts, the guide, the spring, and the housing. And I do like that the lever is connected to this one. It just makes it so much easier to break down. There's nothing bad about these parts, but to me, they feel on the cheaper side and there's a bit of graininess as you're unscrewing them. This trigger has a small hinge at the bottom of it that's used to press down on the air piston to release air. And I'd have to say that this trigger feels very comfortable. Again, the machining on it, not so great looks a bit on the cheaper side. But at this price point of only 39 US dollars, I don't have any complaints here. At the bottom of the airbrush, you have this air assembly. There's no need to break this down. Inside here, there's a spring and a small piston. And of course, within the body of the airbrush in here is the needle packing screw, and this prevents any paint from leaking back into the body of the airbrush. And on the front of the airbrush, I can unscrew this air cap, which gives us access to the nozzle. Now this is one of the screw in nozzle designs. This is my least favorite out of any type. And if you want to swap this out with the 0.2 or the 0.5, the airbrush comes with a very small wrench that you could use to do that. But if it's in within your budget, I recommend picking up one of these nozzle wrenches. Iwata makes an excellent one. And these are great. It kind of holds the nozzle in place as you unscrew it. These nozzles are absolutely tiny. They're like the size of a grain of rice. And so they're are very easy to lose or drop as you're removing them. And if you're prone to dropping these or losing them like I am, definitely pick up one of these wrenches. It just makes it so much easier. So for this review, I'm removing this 0.3 millimeter nozzle and I'm swapping it out with the 0.2. If you do this on your airbrush, make sure that you also swap out the needle to the correct one. Since I'm placing on the 0.2 millimeter nozzle here, I'm also going to have to use the 0.2 millimeter needle. You never want to mix and match these. The needle and the nozzle size always have to be the same diameter. Each nozzle also comes with its own air cap, so you want to make sure you swap that as well. So again, the build quality of this one is fair. It's nothing great, but in no way is it bad. So let's move along to the most important part of this review, which are the spray tests. 
First up is the spray angle, and I'm spraying with the needle fully retracted at 20 PSI. And you can see in Photoshop here that I get a spray angle of around 16 degrees. So this spray angle of 16.2 degrees makes it excellent for detail work. On this chart from every other airbrush I reviewed on this channel, I see that it's just in line with the SOTAR 2020 and the HPV Plus by Iwata. Both of those also have 0.2 millimeter needles and nozzles, so it makes sense that it's about the same spray angle. Checking the airspeed at 20 PSI, three and a half inches away, I get an airspeed right around 6.3 meters per second. And from my test, this feels very similar to the Iwata Eclipse and the Badger Patriot 105. This is about what I expected from this airbrush because it's clearly designed as a general use airbrush. And from my test, they all spray at around this airspeed. But the great thing about this master airbrush is you do have those two different nozzle sizes. So if I wanna get some more detail, I could swap over to the two like I did or if I want to spray some thicker paint, I could switch over to that five. So it's definitely a nice touch to have these added in with the kit. And I'm happy to say that the response rate on this one is very good. All I'm doing here is seeing how far I have to pull back on the trigger for the airbrush to release paint. And you can see that it's very, very small. Just a touch back gives me paint. So I'm very happy with this. And checking the consistency, spraying this long, thin line, we could see that there's no sort of skipping in the paint. There's no splatters. It's doing a great job. And as I say in all my reviews, every airbrush under 0.35 millimeters is going to spray a very similar size line, right around a quarter of a millimeter. So this is very similar to the Iwata Eclipse. And if you get in really close, hold it right off the surface, you can get a line width that's identical to the Sotar 2020 and very similar to the Iwata Micron. So this is a little painting that I've been working on for for the last few days. This is gonna be one of the next art tutorials coming up in a week or so. And for the majority of this, I was using my Iwata Custom Micron. And since I'm still in the early stages of this painting, I decided to switch over to this Masters Airbrush to see how it compared and how well it paints. I started right out doing some detail work on this lower lip. I just needed to add a few shadows in here before erasing later. And I have to say this airbrush did a great job. The response rate was very good and it was spraying paint exactly where I wanted it to. I was spraying here at 20 PSI and one thing that I'm just not a huge fan of is that higher airspeed. Any general use airbrush is going to have a higher airspeed like this but when you're going in for detail work you kind of hear and feel that air blowing off the canvas and it just makes it kind of annoying when you're getting close for that detail. Another thing I wasn't so crazy about is that although the trigger feels pretty comfortable, there's definitely some sort of graininess to it. You kind of feel this metal on metal feel as you're pulling back. And in no way is it a bad thing or a deal breaker. It just doesn't feel as smooth as what you'd see in a higher end airbrush. But the good thing is that this airbrush sprays great. You really can do every single thing that you can with an Iwata Eclipse or a Badger Patriot 105. The main differences between those airbrushes and this one is that those are just built to a much higher standard. So I would say that if you're looking to get into airbrushing and you want to try different nozzle sizes and different needle sizes, this master airbrush is an excellent option. You could use that 0.2 millimeter needle and nozzle for some detail work and then when you want to spray some thicker paints like a base coat or maybe a varnish at the end, you could swap over to that 0.5. And for 40 US dollars, you're not going to get this from any other airbrush. So who would I recommend this airbrush to? First of all, someone on a budget who's looking to start airbrush painting. You get a lot for your money with this one. And also, if you continue airbrushing and want to step up to a nicer airbrush, this one makes a great backup. And the others that I'd recommend this to are just those of you who want a reliable backup airbrush. Sometimes I need to add a varnish on a smaller painting and I just don't want to take out the HVLP or LVLP spray gun. So an airbrush like this makes a great option to spray on a thin layer of varnish. So that's going to complete this review. Definitely a cool airbrush to consider at a really, really great price point. Thank you so much for watching and I will be back here next week and we'll get back to some painting.